The Salinas River, a 175-mile river that runs through California's central coast, has been invaded by a noxious pest, the non-native plant Arundo donax, also called giant cane, giant reed, or false bamboo. This formidable weed forms enormous monocultures and can reach heights over 30 feet tall. On the Salinas, Arundo heightens the risk of flooding to adjacent farmland, consumes high amounts of water, and reduces the quality of wildlife habitat for endangered species in riparian areas. Across the western United States, Arundo has already invaded parts of major rivers including the Rio Grande in Texas and several coastal rivers in Southern California. Along the Salinas River, Arundo was originally planted for riverbank stabilization in the 1940s by U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, but has since become a menace, overtaking 1,500 acres along the river in an invasion that disproportionately affects farmers. We've been doing uh, Arunda removal uh, on our property or near our property for around 40 years. Scott Anthony, a Salinas Valley native and third generation farmer, owned several farms along the Salinas River and has frequently struggled with both Arundo and flooding problems. And it has caused uh, the river to, uh, when, it's, when it's really rocking and rolling, it has caused it to actually uh, break over the side here and go into the ranch. Uh, several years ago, uh, it actually went onto the ranch and it caused Arunda to be the worst weed I, I had on the ranch at the time. Earlier in the year, we had some flooding on a, you know, part of our property. We couldn't, couldn't farm it for six days, plus you had to uh, re-level re it because of the river going through it. Flooding is a critical issue for the agricultural industry. It creates a food safety problem and many crops are lost. So Arunda was initially brought in by, by the Spanish and actually actually there was the uh, Army Corps of Engineers that also supported the, the introduction of Arundo to stabilize the riverbanks, but it, it doesn't really stabilize the riverbanks very well. It's a very shallow rooted plant. And so what happens in large rain events, the, the river will undercut the, the Arundo, the Arundo will fall over and start floating down the river in, in large masses. And what we've seen before is that it will create dams. It'll dam the water, it'll, it'll divert the water and, and create streams that undercut bridges. The Salinas River is flashy, sometimes only flowing underground in places and other times producing devastating floods. Arundo's dense structure causes water to back up during high flows, causing the river to overtop its banks and flood adjacent cropland. Another problem with Arundo invasion is that it degrades habitat for fish and wildlife. So when the Arundo takes over, it, it will, it plants itself and it takes over on the river banks, which affects the repairing corridor. So that affects one whole sweep of wildlife that's associated with the repairing areas. It also takes over onto the adjacent grasslands, which is a whole another suite of species. That's where your nesting pond turtles are and the badgers are. And the non-native Arundo is present. It's a very monotypic tall stand that doesn't have the lower canopy, mid canopy, and upper canopy differences in structure for wildlife. It's kind of like walking through a cornfield. Arundo also uses up to six times as much water as native vegetation, leaving less water in the river for fish and wildlife, and less water in the ground to be drawn on for crop irrigation. Arundo is actually a very impressive plant. It can grow up to four inches per day, and it has these 
rhizomes here, these underground storage organs, which store energy and enable the plant to bounce back after a drought, after being mowed, even after being sprayed. And one of the way that Arundo invades is when a flood comes through, it'll dislodge pieces of rhizomes or the canes like this. They'll float downstream, get lodged in a bank somewhere, and then start a whole new infestation. To address the need for Arundo removal along the Salinas River, the Monterey County Agricultural Commissioner and the Resource Conservation District initiated the Arundo Control Program. The Salinas Arundo Control Program is based on Arundo treatment protocols that have been developed in California over the past 20 or 30 years. Biomass reduction is typically the first phase of the Arundo control process, where mowers go out and physically reduce the Arundo biomass. Then the Arundo re-sprouts from the large underground rhizomes that allow the plant to sprout new canes. This initial treatment is pretty effective, but re-sprouts occur for multiple years afterward that require follow-up treatments in order to achieve the ultimate goal of Arundo eradication. Because Arundo spreads down the river during high flow events, it is necessary to take an upstream to downstream approach. This is complicated by the fact that the length of the Salinas River is comprised of privately owned parcels. A big challenge with treating with Arundo on the Salinas River is that there are so many different landowners along the river, so many parcel boundaries, and to do the work in a, in a manner that respects or is sensitive to how the river flows and moves, we have to be able to cross those boundaries. And there are fence lines and there's access points that are associated with each ranch that we're working on. Uh, associated with those fence lines are also different cultures of the different companies that are farming or own those properties. And we have to be respectful of how each of them work and operate. Well, the Agricultural Commissioner's Office has a, a long relationship with uh, the Resource Conservation District of, of Monterey County. You know, they've been around since uh, 1941. Um, you know, they've been working on projects to enhance environmental sustainability, resource conservation, and viability of the agricultural industry. They're not regulatory, so they're trusted by uh, both the uh, landowners and uh, the regulatory people. So they are able to, to get the permits uh, to do the work. An important part of this program is ensuring that we comply with environmental permits. So we have uh, biologists survey all of the work areas before work is complete. We have on-site biological monitors ensuring that the crews are um, conducting their work in accordance with the permits. <clears throat> and we also do water testing to make sure that the herbicides we use, which are aquatic approved and low toxicity, um, are not impacting the watershed. We have a mapping system that can be used on a tablet or, or a phone and the biologists can mark areas in the field when they're doing their surveys that show where hazards are that can be avoided, also sensitive habitat areas that we want to avoid, and then the mowers, while they're working, have the iPad or phone in their cab, and they can actually see where those areas are and avoid them. The Arundo Control Program creates a win-win solution for farmers and the environment. You know, the Runa Control, basically, they can't, you guys came in and said you were going to do it, especially on another ranch, and you did what you said you were going to do. You got all of the areas that were accessible to, uh, to the equipment that you had, and you, you controlled it. Where the Arundo has been removed for a couple of years, we're starting to see some native plants come back, which provides the, the base and structure for the wildlife. When we started this work in 2014, actually hitting the ground in the river corridor, we were looking at treating up to 1,500 infested acres of Arundo on the Salinas River. In four years, we've treated about 400 acres, a combination of mowing and herbicide applications, and on every one of those acres, multiple years of treatment. And then we are looking at another 1,000 acres or so of, of treatment of new acreage while following up with the old acreage to make sure nothing regrows. That's a big task. Fortunately, we have an excellent partnership with funding agencies such as the Wildlife Conservation Board, 
with local agencies, our agricultural commissioner, our water resources agency, with local farm farming organizations and landowner partnerships, the Salinas River Channel Coalition, the River Management Unit Association, the Farm Bureau, the Grower Shipper Association, and I apologize if I'm missing anybody. With that partnership has made this possible and has actually given us uh, confidence that we can pull this off in the next decade or two because it's that long of a game at least and we look forward to the continued work and are honored that we get to be part of something that works on such a large scale that has such a substantial benefit and is so desired by so many people across the board. Mm -hmm.